Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss the topic flow measuring devices. So this is this topic is for automation one for week five. Let's get uh, let's get started. We have air measurement of process value, flow measuring devices and tachometers, and humidity measuring devices. Learning objectives, explain the principle of operation of various measuring instruments, use on board ship such as Meters and UMDT measuring devices. Characteristics of different types of flow measuring devices. Principle of tachometer. After the discussion, especially uh, during the discussion, I have to conduct oral recitation. But since this is recorded discussion, so I will schedule later. So you have also. I will give you also quiz, quiz four for this week, and you have a laboratory exercises number five, flow measuring devices. So you have here the characteristics of different types of flow measuring devices. So we have example examples of flow meters. We have orifice type, weight type, venture tube type. So for orifice type, this uh, this is used for clean and dirty liquids, some slurries. Weight type, slurries and viscous liquids. So viscous liquids is uh, uh, low boil, the marine fuel oil. So they are viscous liquids. Flow nozzle type. So this is used for clean and dirty liquids. Pilot tube type. For clean liquids only. Elbow meter type. Later on, I will show you the image of these types of flow meters. So clean, dirty liquids and some slurries. We have here target meter, clean, so intended for clean, dirty, viscous liquids, and some slurries, variable area, clean, dirty, and viscous liquids, positive displacement, so clean, viscous liquids, turbine type, clean, and viscous liquids, vortex, clean, and dirty liquids, electromagnetic, clean, dirty, viscous, Conductive, liquids and slurries, ultrasonic, uh, Doppler, intended for dirty viscous liquids and slurries, ultrasonic time of travel, clean and viscous liquids, a lot of types of flow meter as flow measuring devices. So we have here mass, uh, Coriolis type. For clean and dirty viscous liquids, some slurries. Mass thermal type, clean, dirty viscous liquids and some slurries. Where the nuts, clean, dirty liquids. Plum type, partial, clean and dirty liquids. So almost the same application. So, what is orifice flow meter? An orifice or orifice meter is basically a type of flow meter used to measure the rate of flow of liquid or gas, especially steam, using the differential measurement principle. It is mainly used for robust application, as it is known for its durability and 
is very economical. Next, so we have here the uh, photo. So, so the or uh, orifice type kilometer. So the orifice type kilometer has an orifice uh, in between the the, inlet, uh, the suction pressure and the uh, the discharge pressure so it it uh, measures the differential of the inlet and the outlet so this is the flow next so we have we uh, here wage flow meter so uh, what is wage flow meter? General description. A wage flow meter is preferably applied in a difficult meter line fluids like air, intrinsic liquids, particular intrinsic liquids, high viscous liquids or slurry liquids which are abrasive or fibrous. It is applicable for clean liquids, gas, air and steam. So here is the illustration, wage flow meter. So the flow is here, and there is a capillary. So liquid filled capillary, both in the high pressure and low pressure. So liquid filled capillary, and we have here the cell element. So, this capillary here has a liquid, so it's either uh, uh, glycerin liquid. So I, I don't know exactly, but there are some system that uh, they are filled with glycerin. So the, the inlet pressure is uh, the high pressure because this is a. Uh, uh, the wheel flow element here uh, probably reduce the flow into low pressure. So here is the inlet is high pressure and the outlet is low pressure. So it reads whatever the uh, movement here, the high pressure side uh, going to the low pressure side, it reads here the flow meter. So this is one example of uh, flow measuring devices as wheel flow. Meter. Next, we have venturi meter. So there are a lot, a lot of uh, uh, what we call the flow measuring devices. But I only show you here uh, just a few because uh, we only need to uh, discuss few examples. So, binturi meter, binturi meters can pass 25 to 50 percent more flow than an orifice meter. So, more than 25 to 50. So, in binturi meter job, the fluid flow rate is measured by reducing the cross sectional flow area in the flow path. So, generating a binturi flow meter. So, this is the illustration. Uh, first the inlet is here is in the higher flow and it is being reduced here uh, across sectional area to area and again here in the outlet it is uh, increasing the uh, cross sectional flow area so this is binturi meter. 
X. So, we have here, how does a plunusol measure? No. So, when a, when a plunusol is placed in the pipe, carrying whose rate of flow is to be measured, the plunusol causes pressure drop, which varies with the flow rate. The pressure drop is measured using a differential pressure sensor and when calibrated this pressure becomes a measure of flow rate So we have here the illustration, no nozzle. So as you can see, just like a uh, uh, nozzle. So uh, it, it it passes here in the inlet, and then it reduces here the the uh, the uh, flow sectional area and then uh, the inlet is the high pressure and the outlet is the low pressure so it's uh, the same with the uh, the same with here which flow meter so almost the same so that is an example of flow nozzle uh, flow meter uh, illustration so we have here the application of flow nozzle uh, flow meter so it is used to measure flow rates of the liquid discharge into the atmosphere so it is used uh, usually use in situation where suspended solids have the property of sitting so it is widely used for high pressure and temperature steam flows so in this type of uh, flow measuring devices we have the advantages flow nozzle so installation is easy and is cheaper when compared to venturi meter it is very compact as high coefficient of discharge. So, if we have the uh, disadvantages, we have also uh, advantages. We have also the disadvantages. So, advantage disadvantages of flow nozzle. So, pressure recovery is, is low. Maintenance is high. Installation is difficult when compared to orifice flow meter or orifice. Next, we have here the pitot tube. It's a differential pressure measuring device. So the pitot tube installed in the flow stream measures the direct pressure at the contact pitot tube pool. And a second measurement is required being of static pressure. The difference between the two measurement gives a value for dynamic pressure. So this, this is your dynamic pressure here. So normally uh, here the continuous deflecting, uh, lowering down and uh, going up the pressure is just an uh, illustration of uh, uh, because this is a uh, uh, GIF. Uh, image but normally the pressure is steady steady so just just to show you so here there is uh, what we call the pitot tube directly mounted inside the uh, the pipe and directly connected to the uh, uh, local uh, gauge the uh, 
uh, is the gauge. So, how it is measured? At how it is measured? It says here, direct pressure at the contact. Uh, so, it is measured direct the, di uh, the direct pressure and uh, the difference of the direct pressure and the static pressure is being measured. So here, here is the direct pressure. And you have the static pressure here, the uh, low pressure. So it is uh, uh, minus uh, from direct pressure minus the static pressure. Then it gives you the value for a dynamic pressure. So dynamic here, this uh, uh, the movements of the fluid here or liquid that is dynamic. Uh, pressure is being measured. So next, we have also uh, uh, elbow meter. What is elbow meter? So it's one of the common flow measurement system which are used to determine the pressure difference. Uh, occurring as fluid flows change by resistance. So this uh, differential pressure exists when a flowing changes direction due to a pipe thumb. So the pressure difference result from the centrifugal centrifugal force. So as you can see here, uh, I, I check the different image of the uh, Elbow meter, they are mounted in between the two elbows, the inlet and the outlet elbows, so in between. So either here or here or here. So it is usually fitted in between of two elbows. It is a uh, elbow meter. And also, the differential pressure is uh, also the principle of uh, how this elbow meter works. So, and also the centrifugal force. So, next, so we have target flow meters. So measure flow by measuring the amount of force exerted by uh, flowing fluid on a target suspended in, uh, in the flow stream. So the force exerted on the target by the flow is proportional to the pressure drop across the target. So as you can see here, there is a target. This is what we call target. Target plate stress element. And we have here uh, on the other end of the target plate is the sensing elements. So it sends uh, the movement here, the other end of your target plate. And then uh, this uh, influence the uh, uh, what we call the mechanism of your flow meter that it reads the flow of the liquid. So this is target flow meter. We have also uh, this is a not flow meter but this is a manometer or the pressure gauge. So we have a uh, Bordon job pressure gauge and we have here a uh, piso resistive sensor. We have also your example of capacitor sensor construction. So uh, these uh, flow measuring devices are converted into uh, electrical signal. So here we have also here the liquid measurement, open tank 
level measurement. So whatever the, the amount to the content of the tank, there is a flow of gravity in here and it measures the, the liquid uh, level. Next, close tank level measurement. So the difference here of the open tank is uh, there is no cover on top. Here there is a cover on top. But the, the return of the uh, what we call the fluid here. So there should be a fluid in in here because of the, the same label here. But you cannot read here. Uh, otherwise this is side class. And some of the uh, media here is the air. Uh, the, the liquid is only at this point. But you can read the, uh, the label of this tank through this uh, uh, label measurement. The gauge. So we have pilot job low measurement. We have also orifice, orifice plate low measurement. So orifice. This is pilot job. Pilot job. So we have volume measurement. We measure the volume and we have also the mass measurement. So Label pressure can be converted to mass using, so there is a table, so I, I did not uh, put here the table. So, let us, uh, uh, what we call this, uh, let us uh, continue with the working principle of tachometer. So, our example here, uh, we have the analog tachometer and we have also the digital. So, an electric thermo a tachometer works on the principle of relative motion between the magnetic field and the shaft of the couple device. The motor of a tachometer works as a generator. For example, it produces the voltage based on the velocity of the shaft. So, it counts the number of the rotations the crankshaft is making per minute. So there is what we call magnetic pickup or magnetic sensor. So this this magnetic pickup is installed at the uh, plywheel. At the plywheel, uh, near the plywheel, and there is a clearance this magnetic sensor here to the flywheel or here the gear this is the gear illustration so when this is turning this uh, flywheel uh, there is a what we call magnetic magne magnetic field uh, produce because this is a, a there is a, there is a magnet in this a magnetic pickup, and it counts the rotation. Uh, it sends this uh, uh, the counting of the rotation as uh, it sends to the uh, your uh, controller. And uh, it gives a reading to your tachometer. Okay. So whether it is analog or uh, digital tachometer. So that is the uh, working principle of the tachometer. So I have experienced before uh, one of uh, the our uh, generator on board ship, uh, emergency generator on board ship, will not uh, engage the breaker when we test our 
emergency generator. So, it, it talks a uh, couple of months uh, those uh, emergency generator uh, back to normal working condition. So, the company sent uh, sensors then stop still working. Then sent again, sent again. So, I think uh, they sent uh, three times. So, it was not working uh, even new sensor. So, one te technician uh, was on board the ship and uh, uh, brought a new sensor, uh, the expensive one sensor. So, we installed those magnetic sensor or magnetic pickup. So the RPM of the uh, emergency generator was back to normal. normal. But still, uh, the circuit breaker going to the emergency switchboard was not uh, uh, yet working normally. It's not uh, engaging when we engage. Even at uh, manual and automatic, both start working. So, uh, since we were about to alongside the US port in America at the time, so well, we tried to uh, email the sister ship, the, the, same, the same type of ship, the same uh, uh, ship in our company. And we 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 uh, we seen the picture that there uh, there are wires three wires in the um, side the uh, emergency switchboard was not connected so the electrician also cannot uh, he, he told us uh, he cannot found in the diagram so. We try to email the, the sister ship and the, the send the send uh, us uh, the same picture and we connect we, uh, uh, the same connection that uh, they are sending to us the picture. So that time the problem was. Uh, are sold. So, uh, those experience was a lesson that uh, we cannot just uh, uh, use a sensor uh, which is not uh, the same as the original because it's not uh, working anymore. The, the, the PLC, the power. Uh, a programmable logical controller controller cannot read cannot read so we should uh, choose the the correct magnetic pickup as the original original one so next uh, we have here in your uh, uh, lab manual activity so uh, Flow can be classified as open channel and close uh, conduit flows in an open channel. Flow, the force up, uh, causing the flow is the force of the gravity on the fluid while uh, close conduit flows occurs when the flow is caused by a pressure difference in the conduit. So you can watch the lecture here in this link. But I try to open this link, I cannot open. So uh, this is the video of discussion of engineer Vera. So here we have an illustration uh, measuring the differential pressure. So the symbol delta P is this differential pressure. So delta P is equal to pressure 1 minus pressure 2. So from here is the pressure 1 and here is the pressure 2. You can measure the delta pressure or differential pressure. So here pressure difference. Delta P. So is uh, 
don't upload pressure P1 coolant inlet pressure and the Q is fluoride so this is cooling water it's cooling water so now uh, Sticking from uh, engine room simulator illustration, so onboard ships monitoring of movement of a liquid or gas is important. So, for instance, in the seawater system shown in the figure here below, number of the right of G indicates the flow of the seawater in ton per hour. So, this one, flow of G. So, this is a uh, measuring the pressure. So, measuring the pressure. So, you can read here all the pressure. Next, in order to sim simulate the scenario, we will be using this type of flow sensor to interface the, interface the mi microcontroller. So, microcontroller is your controller. So that we can measure the flow of water. So the water flow sensor consists of a plastic valve body, a water rotor, and a half effect sensor. So when the water flows through the rotor, rotor rolls, and the speed of it changes with a different rate of flow. So the call effect sensor outputs the corresponding false signals. Signal so. How to use water to sensor or do not tutorial five steps with picture instructions. So this one is your uh, microcontroller and this one is your uh, flow sensor. So you have to do that in your uh, lab manual exercises. So this is your lab manual exercises. I already uploaded. This one in your binacle. So just uh, check in your binacle and download it. So how does a flow measuring devices? So by engineer Louis Vera. So you can follow this link. Uh, as the guide of your uh, lab manual exercises. How does a tachometer works? So this is video of engineer Vera, you can follow this link for your uh, lab manual exercises. So this is the end of the discussion. Uh, hope you uh, please click like and share. Uh, write a comment below and uh, hit the subscribe button. Click the notification button. So that you cannot miss the updates of my, uh, on my next video. Thank you for watching and see you on my next video.